Perfect. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation again. Uh, very happy, very uh, pleased to be here with you today to speak a little bit about projects, which is our specialty, my, my own specialty and the specialty of the, of the organization that I'm representing. As I was introduced, my name is Roberto Toledo. I'm an architect by profession. Though for the last 20, 22 years, I have devoted myself to be a trainer and consultant in project management methodologies. As far as my work, one thing that I started probably some 15 years ago was uh, being a member of the Project Management Institute. I have been a member for the Project Management Institute for so many years already. And I started being a volunteer for the organization, being part of uh, the individuals looking to foster the profession of project manager management some 15 years ago. Uh, currently, I have the honor to be part of the board of directors, the main governing body of the organization, along with 11 other volunteers from around the world. I have the responsibility to govern the organization. Uh, we are the, the, the CEO of the organization reports directly to us. And one of my main duties is to have outreach activities like this one, like that one that we are having today with you. Uh, you can see some of my experience in this slide. But today, what I'm going to be talking about with you uh, is about the project economy. One thing that we have defined uh, a couple of years ago, we believe that given the current environment that we are facing in many different industries, we are uh, experiencing, experiencing a season, uh, uh, a time of a lot of changes. And these changes, amongst other things, what uh, uh, it's provoking is that we have a lot of projects in our hands and the importance of the project management activities and the for profession has been enhanced in a, in a very important way in the last five to ten years. And this is where the Project Management Institute, I think, represents uh, the desire, the needs of the profession, of the professionals in this profession to really update and make our work even more uh, more important than what is currently what currently is. The idea is that I can uh, share with you today some of the insights that we have gained over the last several years in terms of uh, the state of the project management uh, profession, the state of what we are calling the project economy, and some of the different activities that we have been doing for the last uh, several years. The organization is not new. The organization is being, uh, was established 50 years ago, but of course the relevance of our organization have been dramatically increased in the past, as I said, five to 10 years. Today, we are one of the largest professional organization, uh, organizations around, from around the world, uh, in, in particularly in the project management profession space. We are the largest one. We have more than 600,000 members, more than 1.6 million professionals certified, particularly as most of these individuals uh, acquired the PMP certification. Probably some of you today have heard about the PMP certification. The Project Management Professional Certification is our landmark certification. And this professional certification basically uh, tells uh, the, the, the market that an individual have the knowledge and the skills in order to manage projects in whatever industry. We are an organization uh, um, tending to a profession that we define as an horizontal uh, uh, profession because we are not in one industry. We are present in many different industries, of course, including the construction industry. And even though we have seen so many changes, so many disruptions, and they are called today in different industries uh, around the world, around the, 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 the economy, particularly in the construction industry, we are seeing some very interesting trends, specifically in the recent years, that I would like to share with you uh, today. Uh, it is not a secret, and probably you are all very aware of this, that we are living in a time of a lot of changes. Uh, actually, some people ref uh, refer, uh, refer to the time that we are living, not as a time of change, but a change of, in times, which is uh, something uh, uh, hard to say, but uh, probably close to the truth. 
the technology that we have seen in the recent years have changed completely the way that organizations, companies deliver their products and services to consumers. The way, the way that we inter, uh, relate with each other, the way that we communicate with each other, the way that we access services, that we access products, and even uh, the way that uh, uh, governments and countries uh, relate to their citizens. So we are seeing change, changes and change everywhere. And the companies all around the world and in all different in industries have to be, uh, for, for the last couple of years, are being uh, uh, constantly adapting to these, uh, to these changes. And probably in the last two years is where we have seen most of these changes happening, particularly in relation to the COVID pandemic that we are still experiencing. And with different levels has been a world a phenomenon that has affected organizations all over the world. In this context, uh, as a profession, the project managers, we have been the center of all these changes that we have seen in recent years. And as an organization, we have been able to uh, witness that many different industries all over the world, in different economies, in different countries, have been adapting uh, through many different projects to these changes, to the point where today we can uh, use this phrase from Charles Darwin from many years ago that said that it is not necessarily the strongest of the species nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is more adaptable to change. Of course, the phrase that Mr. Darwin uh, came up with many, many years ago when, when he uh, de defined this concept, he was talking about animal species. But today we can use the same phrase to refer to what has been happening to organizations, to companies, to professionals around the world. We have seen that uh, in many different industries, organizations have been pushed uh, to uh, constantly uh, modify the way that they deliver value to their customers and adapt to the new reality that we are facing, basically because of the changes in technology that I already mentioned that I was referring to. But for the construction industry, for the work that we architects do, it seems that it has not been exactly the same case. Probably you have noticed it, that uh, other industries have been more uh, is, uh, quick on adapting to the new environment and it has not been the case with the construction industry, particularly in, the re in recent years. If we go back to the 1930s and 19, or, or 1940s, in those times, the construction industry was actually considered a very innovative industry, an industry which was a reference to other industries in terms of the advancement, the technology that we, they were using at that time. This is a very old picture, as you can see that are here in the screen, and it's a picture of uh, some workers uh, working on the construction of, of the Empire State Building in the United States. And as I said, at that time, the construction industry was considered a very innovative uh, industry with a lot of advancements, and uh, which was at the forefront of uh, the innovation that happened at those years. Unfortunately, for the past 40 probably more years, it seems that the construction has not evolved a lot. Some of the processes that we are still using are exactly the same that were used in the 1930s and 1940s. And we have lagged in terms of innovation, use of new technologies, research and development, and many other areas that make uh, an industry competitive, productive, and, for, and, and, and therefore in the forefront of the innovation. If you compare, for example, the construction industry with the automotive manufacturing industry, the differences are really, really interesting. This is another picture. This is a picture of a construction, sorry, manufacturing line for automotives in the United States as well. From the 1930s and 1940s, uh, the same uh, time where we had this other picture that I sh just showed you about the construction of the Empire State Building. But if you take a look at one of the modern 
current actual uh, manufacturing lines for the auto industry, you were going to see that there has been a lot of changes. This is a picture of a manufacturing line for the company Audi, the, the German company that was just constructed in my country, in Mexico, a couple of years ago, and is almost completely automated. The use of robots, new technology, artificial intelligence accounts for up to 80% of the processes that are involved in the construction of an automobile, particularly in this plant, which is uh, some three hours away from where I live. They are currently building the Q5, the model Q5 of the Audi uh, brand. And uh, have the, I had the opportunity to visit this plant uh, a couple of months ago, and it's really impressive when you see all these robots uh, working on the construction of an automobile, something very different from what we have in the in the in the last uh, 30, 40 years probably. And I'm using this picture just to show you the difference in advancement that the construction industry has had compared to other industries. But give me just one second, give me give me a couple of minutes because we are starting to see a change in the construction industry. Even though the construction industry has been lagging behind other industries for so many years, that is already changing. And the changes that we are going to see in the near future are going to be really dramatic because there has been such a um, uh, um, way a smaller advancement in the construction industry the areas of opportunity right now for the construction industry are, are much more bigger than in other areas. Therefore, it is important that we acknowledge that this is changing at this moment and what are the major challenges that we are facing uh, for the next years. For the recent years, as you can see in this graphic, as I mentioned before, the construction industry has been lagging behind other industries in terms of innovation, use of technology, research and development. If you can see in this graph, the red line on the bottom of the screen, this one that I'm, I'm pointing at it right now, represent the construction industry in terms of a percent of revenue spent on research and development. Compared to many other industries that have a way bigger percentage of spending in terms of research and development. And this is one of the reasons why in the construction industry, unfortunately, until today, the, the revenue, the, the profit margins that we are able uh, to, to command in the project that we do are way smaller than what they do in other industries. And the construction industry is very, very important to the world economy. The construction industry is an integral part of the world economy. In just one second, I'm moving to the next slide. There's uh, some technical issues here. It's taking a little bit more time than it is supposed to. But anyway, let me start uh, talking about what, ah, there you have it. Here we have the next slide. So I was saying the importance of the construction industry is critical. The construction industry, it is estimated that accounts for around 13% of the world gross product. And a lot of uh, people, a lot of individuals work in the construction industry. In every country that you go today, the workers of the construction industry are a very important part of the task force of that particular country. And usually, they are not the individuals with the highest working standards because of the same lack of productivity, uh, which is a result of the lack of investment that we have seen in the construction industry. The productivity growth of the construction industry, again, has been lagging behind other industries and of the uh, average of all the different industries. This is the average of all different industries. This is 
the productivity rate of the manufacturing industry, for example, the one that I just showed you, like the manufacturing of automobiles. And this is the, the line representing the productivity of the construction industry. If you can see here, the productivity has maintained, has been uh, on, on a very low level for many different years. And at the Project Management Institute, what we have done in the recent years is that we conducted a couple of, of uh, researches, a couple of investigations on our own to try to identify what is up with the construction industry, why this situation is happening, and if we are seeing any changes in the near future. And probably to our own surprise, what we found is that the change in the construction industry already started. We are starting to see a much more higher use of technology. Uh, technological companies are turning to the construction industry and seeing that there is a lot of uh, areas of opportunity. And for the past four or five years, they have been investing heavily in technology specifically designed for the construction industry. So the change already started, but we are just seeing the very first manifestations of that change. We are just experiencing the very first uh, steps towards uh, converting the construction industry again in an innovative industry. And you know something? Some of these changes, some of these very early stages, uh, we have seen those particularly in two regions in the world. One in the Asia region, particularly with China, and the other in the Middle East. The Middle East currently, today, is at the forefront, is at the, at the, at the top of the innovation that is currently happening in the construction industry. Another thing that we identified within the Project Management Institute is that it is not only technology. There's another reason why the construction industry has been lagging behind when compared to other industries from around the world. And it has to do with skills. Let me share with you a couple of the findings of these different researches that we have done in the past trying to identify what are the challenges that we are facing today within the construction industry and what we can do in our own companies, in our own organizations, within our own countries in order to uh, adapt our companies, our organizations to this new reality that we are just starting to see in the construction industry. Let's talk about first technology, which is probably the trend that is going to be more important in terms of changes to the construction industry. And I'm sure you have been able to see this in your own projects, in your own context, within the technology that you are already applying in, the, in, in, in your own projects. For one thing, technology and digitalization is already impacting construction around the world. The use of technology is already making a difference in terms of which organizations are more successful in the project management of, a, of a construction projects, in the, in the managing of construction projects, and which organizations are not using technology. But as I said before, there is a lot of room for opportunity. Take a look at some of the the data at some of the information that I'm sharing with you here in this slide. 95% of all data captured in construction and in the engineering industry goes unused. One of the main differentiators from other industries around the world that has been more innovative over the last several years is a much more deep use of the data, of the data that they, they are able to acquire. If we can really leverage information from our operations, from our clients, from, from the market, in order to define the uh, new products, new services that we need to provide as an organization, as a company, then we will have a competitive advantage that is really important. 60% of construction firms do not have 
a dedicated research and development budget. As I mentioned before, if you see this number, it is probably not that bad. This is changing in the last couple of years. 59% of companies state that the workforce doesn't have the skills needed to work with business information modeling systems. Probably you have heard about them. You have heard about these systems. They are completely revolutionizing how we schedule, how we budget for construction projects. And finally, 38% of construction firms cite a lack of staff to support the technology. They don't have enough uh, resources. They don't have enough people with enough technology knowledge, the skills in order to really leverage the use of all these new technologies that we have available, particularly in the construction sector. And this is the last piece of information relates to the next one, to the other finding that we uh, encounter in the research that we have been doing. The other big problem that many industries uh, share, but it is of particular concern in the construction industry, is what we call the skills gap. The lack of necessary knowledge, skills, experience, in the people working in projects, particularly in construction projects, in order for them to do a proper work. 79, almost 80% of the CEOs of an organization from around the world in different industries are concerned the lack of a key skills is a threat to their business. It is not only the construction industry, but probably in the construction industry, we are more aware of this lack of uh, adequate skills in the people, in the teams working in our own projects. 55% believe this skills gap is impacted their organization's ability to innovate effectively. As I already mentioned before, many of the construction companies from around the world think that they don't have enough people with the technology skills that they need in order to leverage the, the, the new technologies available. And very recently, uh, we found in a, a study by McKinsey and company that currently in any industry, the project management ability, the project management skill is considered one of the nine most important and growing skills for the future. And probably there is no other industry where this is more important than in the construction industry. Because you know that the work that we do is completely projectized. That means all the work that we do is done through projects. And therefore, it is critical that our teams have that knowledge in order for them to properly manage the projects. And the consequences of not having enough people with the right skills in our teams is also evident, particularly in the construction industry. Uh, part of our survey that we did, particularly in the construction industry, told us that almost, sorry, more than 72% uh, uh, exper uh, companies experience project delays always or often. 70% of organizations from around the world, uh, the participants that answer our survey, experience scope creep always or often. If you are not that familiar with the scope creep concept, the scope creep is how we call to these uh, uncontrolled increments in the scope, in the size of our projects, that in the end, what happens if uh, the scope is uh, growing uh, without control is that this ends up on uh, the projects being always late, exceed original timelines, 40% of the uh, uh, projects exceed the timelines, or very often, costing more than what was budgeted in the beginning. 73%, up to 73% of our projects finish over budget. This is particularly concerning, as I said, in the construction industry. And this is in direct relationship with the lack of skills, with the lack of knowledge, particularly project management knowledge, 
when we are referring to the resources to the team members that work in the construction industry. Uh, part of our survey told us that for every billion dollars that are that is spent in the construction industry, around in average 127 million is wasted compared to only 130 million is spent or wasted. Uh, as a result of over budget, uh, big projects being over budget or over the original time in other types of projects, in other non construction projects. So, two things here lack of use of technology, lack of the proper skills in the workforce, in the task force of our industry are producing that we are not seeing the results that we would like to see in the construction industry. So, as a matter of summer, key messages. The construction industry currently is still somewhat broken, but in the first stages of a major disruption. This is very important to acknowledge. And let me share with you that the experience says to us from other industries that once an industry goes into a disruptive stage, it starts making a better use of technology, leveraging the new types of uh, digital tools that we have available uh, out there in different uh, markets, then the difference between the companies that really use the technology and have the right skills on their, on their people and the other companies starts to grow uh, even more than what we usually have. So here's a message to you that I think you take into consideration. If you do not start right now investing in these two particular topics, better use of technology and improving the skills of your talent, of your workforce, then you are going to be lagging even more behind other organizations in the same industry that are going to do the same or are actually doing the same. Lack of proper project management methodologies for projects with increased complexity. This is another thing that we need, what we need to acknowledge. Our projects today, because of all the specifications and requirements that we receive, are much more complex than the projects that we had in the past. Also, in other industries, they have been very quick to adapt to the new project management methodologies, to the lean and agile practices, not the case with the construction industry. Lack of adequate skills in its resources, where technical skills must be complemented by capabilities focused on working with people and leading teams. And this is very important. It is not only technical skills. It is not only uh, the knowledge that we have in terms of uh, project management and methodologies or in terms of uh, the technology that we can use. It is also how we integrate a team, how we motivate the, the team members, how we motivate the workers in our industry, how we do a better world, a more collaborative world in the projects that we are working on poor use of technology, data usage, and innovation, as I said before. We need to start quickly changing this in the construction industry. And finally, think about upskilling, training on digital dexterity, on the knowledge of technology, on the knowledge of tools as a priority as technology continues to evolve. These are some of the challenges that we have identified. The last piece of this research that we conducted at PMI was done at the, at the end of last year, when we were already in the middle of the pandemic, of the, of the coronavirus pandemic. So another aspect that we included in, the, our, in the, our most recent research is the changes that the construction professionals were seeing around the world because of the situation that we are still facing. And let me tell you that it's going to be a, a never presence at least for another one or two years. 
even though vaccination has helped a lot of countries overcome the major and the biggest uh, challenges of the pandemic, we are still in the middle of this situation. And we are still going to see a lot of adaptations and changes coming up in the next several months. Some of the findings that we did in terms of uh, what is happening because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, because of the coronavirus situation, are directly related to the construction industry. Particularly, we identified seven different uh, effects that we need to take in, into consideration as we move forward uh, towards the next uh, several months. The first four have to do directly with the type of projects that we are doing and how we are working in the construction industry. And the last three, number five, six, and seven, have to do directly with the use of technology and additional changes that we are seeing because of uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, let me go very quickly to them, just mentioning a couple of uh, uh, important facts. First, we are seeing a change in the type of investments that major banks and major infrastructure organizations are doing around the world. The types of projects is reshaping. Uh, we are uh, gearing the investment more towards hospitals, uh, uh, shared uh, communities, shared homes, and probably less hotels, less resorts, because people is traveling less. There's an enhanced focus on worker safety for sure. We need to be concerned about the health of the people working in the different projects that we are doing, both at the office and at the construction sites. We are still using a lot of virtual meetings whenever practical, and this is going to be a permanent situation for at least one or more years. There's a harder push towards modularization and prefabrication of components because of the need of painting the on-site work shorter, simpler, and having more enough manufacturing facility. A digital supply network, we have seen a lot of disruptions in the supply networks from all around the world uh, is, uh, is becoming right now a most having the industry because we need to have better control of the different supplies. We know that there are problems with many different uh, raw materials, even with finishes all around the world. Artificially intelligence-based technologies and solutions are also helping create safer, safer working environments. And we are starting to see a major shift in the construction industry, which is the use of robots to take over automatic, automatic repetitive steps and drones as well for remote surveillance and inspection. Just some of the effects that we identified from the research that we have done. Get close uh, to the end of my presentation before closing with uh, some additional information. I would like to share with you a video that I have here in my presentation about other trends that we have identified within the Project Management Institute, within our organization, and some of the changes that we anticipate in the future. You are going to hear from many different uh, professionals, all of them members of the Project Management Institute, and experts in different areas, including the construction industry. So I'm going to start projecting the video, Hopefully it will work, you know, with technology, you never know. If uh, you are not able to hear or see the video, please let me know immediately. So we try to correct any problems that we may find. Here we go. Is there a sound for the video? Is there Sorry. a sound for the video or what? Yes, it, it includes sound. Did you were able to yeah. hear the sound? Maybe, yeah, maybe you can share screen again. And yeah, click. Let, me, let me try that. Yeah, and then click share sound. Yeah, that's what I did from the beginning. 
<laughs> Probably I didn't do, do, do it correctly. Give me just one second. Sure. And I'm going to try to do that again. And optimize screen sharing. Yes. So share sound, optimize for video. Here we go again, okay? Yes. Second slide. You are seeing my presentation again now? Yes. Let's give it a second try. Okay, I can hear it. In when I look ahead of the future, I think that the biggest challenge will be understand really the work of artificial intelligence and where is the place for project managers and people working in projects. The changes of project management processes, the changes of the way project managers work will definitely be more reliant on technology. And that's going to increase the importance um, of how people work together and collaborate. That's going to grow an increasingly important component of personal skills, collaboration skills, and leadership skills that go above and beyond the traditional technical skills of project management. But we need to prepare the machines to deliver our projects better so we're not doing the repetitive tasks ourselves. So we're not reactive to the market, we create the next market of project management. The future of project management is, I would say, disrupted. Fast delivery, compressed cycles, as well as fast failure, if that is the case. Leading business with agility. Any future development should reflect that. I think in future of project management, it will be more agile and more business related. Because these days we talk about value. In order to understand the value of that project, you need to understand the business. You gotta have the technical management skills the leadership skills, but we'll also understand the business. In a global environment, it's going to be more diverse cultures coming into the workplace. Therefore, a different take on skills, different time zones, totally different business practices. So you need to plan for those challenges. We need to take care of our environment, to take care of our planet, to go for sustainable projects, projects that take care of the human being. When we talk about DevOps and we talk about Agile, I'm asked, do you those kind of methodologies um, strip away the, the need for a project manager? I think absolutely not. Um, I think we are in need of even more project managers in the future. We are getting more and more project oriented in, in our businesses, in our societies. Artificial intelligence will uh, take some of the jobs, but uh, I think they cannot be a leader. So as a project manager, if you are a good leader, you are going to continue to perform your profession. So as project managers, we have to get better at leading teams and leading people, working with people, and find ways to include automation in what we do while still maintaining our human aspect, our humanity. It's difficult to see something clear in the future, but we should uh, stay prepared uh, to face uh, with flexibility new challenges, new situation. Be prepared to change uh, into something completely different. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Um, here, okay, perfect. So, hope you enjoyed that. Some of the ideas that I share with you, as well as some others that I think are important in the environment that we are facing. And in this environment, we need to rise and face the new challenges that we are seeing. It is important uh, because of uh, the environment that we are looking to take risks, to bet on innovation, to bet on technology and to bet on upskilling our workforce, our talent, investing in our people. And as Mr. Zuckerberg sir, said, the biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that is changing really quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. So I invite you today to take some risks. Finally, I would like to share with you some of the things that we have been doing as a result of all, all this research that we have done within the Project Management Institute. 
And uh, recently, we have said to ourselves, we want to contribute to the disruption that we are seeing in the construction industry. Therefore, we recently developed, very recently developed, a series of uh, trainings that are offered virtual and a certification specifically designed for the construction industry called the PMI construction certification. What we did is uh, look at the needs of the construction industry, look at the gaps in terms of the skills that we know we are facing right now, and the, te- the changes in, uh, because of the technology that we are seeing in the, in the industry, and therefore de- design a series of courses, a program that uh, we are just launching. We, we just launched uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in order to help organizations from around the world train their professionals and upskill the uh, project managers of the construction industry. This is a construction-based uh, uh, course training designed by construction experts and designed to give you the tools and ideas and techniques uh, in order for the people in the construction industry to really acquire the needed knowledge that uh, they uh, must have in order to face the new challenges. And with that, I'm finishing my presentation. I would like to remember only that we are here to help people make their ideas a reality. And we know that in the construction industry and particularly architects, we are uh, experts, we are professionals of uh, converting ideas into reality. And as an organization, we are here to help you. We are here to help you achieve the goals of uh, your different projects. Thank you very much for your attention. And I believe, if uh, I'm correct, that we might have a couple of minutes to take some questions if there are uh, in the audience right now. Thank you for this informative uh, uh, presentation. So we will move forward now to the questions by the audience in the Q&A. Um, and I would like to say to you that uh, if you have questions in English, that is fine for me or even in Spanish. But here in the session, uh, there is, uh, a, we have my colleague, Shwai Barnu. He's uh, one of the staff members of the uh, PMI. And uh, if you have questions in Arabic, he can translate to me so I can answer also those questions. Okay. So let's let's start with, uh, we are welcoming here, Mr. Shwai, and we can also move to the first question where, as an international institution with millions of members, along with the aim to develop a couple of programs, which tools do you think you still need to add in the near future that would enhance the skills of your members? Very good question. Let me say to you that, of course, there's a large collection of tools that we have developed as an organization for the past several years that you can use in any project, in any industry, and of course, particularly in the construction industry. And those tools and techniques, we usually publish those in a document that is a reference uh, uh, around the world for the best practices in project management. The number, the, sorry, the name of that document is uh, the Project Management Body of Knowledge, usually referred as the PMBOK. And we very recently, just a couple of months ago, uh, published the seventh edition of the Project Management Body of Knowledge. And in this new edition, we introduced uh, a lot of the many different new tools, uh, many changes, because we are seeing projects changing around the world. And probably the most interesting part of the new edition is the introduction of lean and agile techniques and methodologies to all the projects around the world, and particularly those in the construction industry. We are seeing uh, increased use of uh, lean construction tools, lean construction techniques, and we are including those in the best practices that we are promoting uh, through the publishing of this document that I just referred to, the Project Management Knowledge. 
Okay. So another question, uh, what is the weight of the responsibility do you think that PMI have on shoulder toward the members now in the, and in the future? Ah, our members are our uh, reason of existence. Uh, we are dedicated to our members, but beyond our members, let me say to you that we are dedicated to the profession, to anybody who calls him or herself a project manager. But for the future, we are seeing that our scope can be increased, and we are also trying to develop tools, resources, courses, certifications, both for the project managers, who are basically the largest uh, proportion of our members, and also for what we are calling the change makers, people that need to work on projects develop projects, manage projects, but probably do not call themselves project managers. We think that they are uh, also project managers, even though we are calling them change makers. And even though we are trying to increase our scope and care and tender for a much larger audience, our members are our core uh, differentiation, are our core a uh, group of stakeholders. So we are always trying to increase the value of the benefits that we deliver to our members from all around the world. Particularly, I would like to mention that in recent months, because of the situation that we have been experiencing, the, the pandemic, many of the courses that we offer virtually in our webpage, pmi.org.org, are offered for free to our uh, members, to anybody that is a member of PMI. Uh, so the last question is, uh, it's an extent of what you have mentioned just now. Uh, what are the most successful initiatives and education uh, plans that you have uh, adopted in PMI that increased awareness and you have seen that revenues? Very, very good question, and thank you for that question. Uh, I would say that the, one of the, the ones that uh, excites me the most, and I, I like the most, is the one that I just shared with you, the construction uh, certification, project management, construction, professional certification. And that is a series of uh, three different courses. We, are just, uh, we just launched, uh, as I said, a month ago, the first one of those uh, three courses. Uh, and each course includes a certification. So what we are doing right now is trying to develop resources and tools, certifications and courses for a specific industries. And one of the industries that we are more concerned about because of the challenges that they are facing is the construction industry for sure. There are other courses and certifications that we are currently developing and that we just released one, another one of them, which is related to organizational transformation and digital transformation. Probably you have heard that there are a lot of organizations currently in the process of transforming the, their business, of transforming the way that they deliver value to their customers through the use of technology. And in that, that particular type of uh, efforts, the role of the project manager is very important, it's critical. So we are also developing a resource there in order to help our project managers, our members, the change makers to better understand how a digital transformation effort is performed or is done in a human organization. So we have just reached, uh, we have had one more question about how could For we sure. develop, yeah, okay. So how can we develop and enhance the construction industry with the use of artificial intelligence and how, can, how, and how could we start implementing in our countries? Very interesting question. And let me tell you two things. I can give you a couple of examples, but of course I'm not an expert in artificial intelligence. What I want to do as a project manager is understand the, basic, uh, the basics of this technology and always be on the look of potential uses of artificial intelligence that can, that can benefit my industry and the types of projects that I'm doing. For example, if I'm in the customer service 
business, if I do customer service projects, I need to be aware that the use of artificial intelligence is rising in the recent years to attend uh, customers' requests. You have seen this in many different web pages around the world where they now they have these uh, chatbots that can answer many different questions without the intervention of a human being, without the intervention of a person, mainly to reduce of artificial intelligence. If I'm in the construction industry, the first thing that I need to do is really understand how can the construction industry and construction employees can be benefit from artificial intelligence. Try to look for the different uses and applications that we are starting to see out there. I can mention two that I am aware of, but I'm sure that there should be many more that I'm not aware of. But I, what I do is try to push myself in order to understand all of the uh, the other uses. The one that, that the ones that I know, first one is uh, that uh, we are starting to use a lot of uh, scheduling softwares, uh, softwares that can produce a uh, project the schedule for a construction project. That instead of us needing to type and in input all the information on the different activities, the durations, and the sequence of those activities, what I can do is tell the software what kind of project I want to do, for example, the construction of a single family home, and then the software looks in the cloud, looks in the, in the, in the data available, projects that are similar to the one that I am preparing, and presents to me a preliminary schedule of a project that is similar to mine, which will allow me to uh, make modifications and produce that schedule in a much more faster way. The other one that I'm aware of is this digital supply chain networks, where again, through the use of artificial intelligence, I can state what kind of a raw materials, finishes I would like to acquire for my organization, and the software helps me find the better provider, the better manufacturer, and the lower cost in order to have those materials ready and available in my construction site. And as I said, those are only two of the uses that I am aware of. I invite you to all, all of you to really start looking for those because if you don't leverage the technology, if you don't leverage this type of new innovations, then probably you won't be competitive enough to continue in the business of doing construction projects. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you for everything. And uh, our greeting here from Saudi to Mexico. And thank you for having me with us today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you to you for the invitation. Very happy and very pleased to be uh, able to participate today with you. Thank you very Thank much. You.